for the identification of vaginal fluid the next thing that you can go for is the identification of acid phosphatase enzyme yes acid phosphatase enzyme is also present in vaginal fluid as it was also present as you are already familiar that it was also present in the seminal fluid so the thing is how you are going to distinguish these two things the same enzyme which is present in both fluids okay so uh, for the sake of your knowledge i would like to tell that at least five different acid phosphatase and the isoenzymes has been found or identified in human tissue out of which you are going to study these two the one which is present in the seminal fluid that you have already studied the other one is the vaginal acid phosphatase which is present in the uh, vaginal fluid so human prostatic acid phosphatase which is present in seminal fluid is found in large quantity in seminal fluid itself and is used as a biomarker for semen identification likewise the small amount of acid phosphatase is also been detected in the vaginal fluid which is produced in normal cervical epithelial cells of vagina and uh, the this vaginal acid phosphatase have been found as a biomarker for the identification of vaginal secretion now if you want to distinguish these two things the prostatic acid phosphatase is a homodimer okay that is it uh, it it has the two uh, molecules of same shape that's why it is called as homodimer and these two subunits have a molecular weight of 50 kilo daltons so based upon its electrophoretic movement that is under the electrophoresis these two molecules uh, the uh, prostatic and vaginal uh, acid phosphatase has the different electrophoretic mobility so based upon its electrophoretic uh, electrophoretic mobility you would be able to distinguish among these two how you are going to distinguish first of all i hope you are aware that what electrophoresis is for your brief uh, i'll give you the brief idea what is it it's an electrophoretic chamber uh, electrophoretic means that you are going to provide the electricity or the charge so uh, on a sample so based upon its uh, charge and mass ratio they are going to segregate from each other so how this uh, uh, chamber has been placed so what is it it's a, a square shaped chamber in which you are going to place the medium on which you are going to place the sample the medium that is used that is the stationary phase which is present in this chamber is the gel so gel could be this uh, gray color thing is uh, you can see over here is the gel itself so this gel could be agarose gel starch or uh, the other gels is like uh, polyacryl amide gel or cellulose acetate membrane so depending upon the availability and the need of the r you can change the um, stationary phase now upon that to provide the mobility you are going to uh, put uh, immerse this gel into the buffer so the buffer uh, is added upon the gel and it is used to provide the electrophoretic uh, mobility okay it helps in providing the electrophoretic mobility now an electrode a negative electrode is uh, attached to this end whereas the positive electrode is uh, attached to this end so that's why this end is called as uh, cathodal end whereas this end is called as anodal end so you are going to place now after that you have to uh, uh, produce the wells in the gel on the negative side of the gel so that you can place your sample in it so the samples will move towards the positive sides based upon the amount of charge so what you are going to do is first of all you are going to place the seminal sample in the next well you are going to place the vaginal sample in the third well you are going to place the semino vaginal fluid the mixture of both so upon adding this and pro providing the uh, electric field what happen here they are going to move based upon the charge towards the positive end so as i already told you that the seminal acid phosphatase has the more mobility so they will move faster as compared to the vaginal acid phosphatase so they will lag behind so now the thing is second thing is these segregation of the molecules which are present in the samples these segregation bands 
are not visible through the naked eyes so what you have to do is you have to stain it with something and you already know that how to stain the um, how to do the staining of uh, acid phosphatase so what you have done earlier i have told you this in the case of seminal uh, identification of acid phosphatase that uh, there is a molecule which is called as mup methyl ambiferone phosphate which is hydrolyzed in the presence of acid phosphatase so that acid phosphatase is going to hydrolyze the phosphate group from this molecule now the molecule which is left behind is 4 methyl ambiferone and it used to fluoresce under uv so this property you are going to use in this once this segregation took place so to locate these pants you are going to react with this mup and you will observe under the uv light so what you will see is wherever these acid phosphatase bands were there they are going to fluoresce under uv so you can see in this upon fluorescence that seminal fluid has a band forming at the um, 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 at the side towards the anodal line whereas the vaginal band is uh, placed towards the cathodal end whereas if the it is having a mixture of seminal vaginal fluid so you will be able to observe the two bands that is vaginal acid phosphatase band and prostate acid phosphatase band so in short you can summarize if you would be able to observe two bands then it could be a mixture of uh, the sample could be a mixture of seminal vaginal fluid and if it is having a one band so based upon uh, by comparing the location you would be able to know that whether the source is seminal or vaginal now now the next thing that you can go for the identification is the bacteria which is present in the vaginal fluids so the most prominent uh, or predominant bacteria which is present in the vaginal uh, area or vaginal cavity is the lactobacillus texa okay and they play an important role in protecting the host against invasive pathogenic organism how they are going to protect because they rely they are survive on the carbohydrates and um, in a, as a result they used to provide uh, they used to produce lactic acid so the production of lactic acid by these lactobacillus um, bacteria is uh, leads to the uh, environment which is having a low ph due to the production of lactic acid as the acidic is having a low ph so because of the low ph environment is established in the lumen of vagina that restrict the growth of pathogenic organisms now these bacteria the lactobacillus bacteria are not uh, limited to the uh, gastrointestinal are not limited to the vaginal uh, cavity they are also present in gi tract urogenital tract so uh, how you are going to distinguish that that's what you have to study but if you go with the shape they are rod shaped non motile and non spore forming gram bacteria so as i already told you that a number of uh, bacteria are present these uh, bacteria classes of bacteria are also present in different things in different uh, fluids like gi tract or some other sources so how you are going to dis distinguish first of all that such vaginal lactic acid producing bacteria were thought to be lactobacillus uh, acidophilus that is the um, they are going to produce lactic acid that's why they are uh, came under the class of acidophilus in 1980 it was determined that the lactobacillus acidophilus was not a single species but actually a group of related species known as lacto acid lactobacillus acidophilus complex so a number of species come under this uh, category so the species like l inners or lactobacillus crispatus or gesseri or l jensini are the most commonest one which are found only in the vaginal so if you uh, found either of the four uh, in in your sample so you would be able to distinguish that the sample could be possibly from the vaginal so among them l inner is the most common species of the lactobacillus in women okay so how you are going to identify these species based upon the dna marker the sequence of the dna marker okay so identification could be done 
and based upon the identification